Hi, dear friends, some words of Torah for Parshat Nitzavim Vayelach. Not only is this the last Shabbat of the year, but it's also the last of the seven Shabbatot after Tisha B'Av, when we read the Shev Dinechemta, the seven Haftarot dealing with consolation that comes after Chorban, destruction. We find ourselves seven weeks later still in need of consolation. The war in Israel continues and has even intensified in Lebanon. We pray for an end to the violence and a final peace that will come with the destruction of Israel's enemies. There's a jarring passage from the Haftorah of this week, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 63. It starts with the words, Mi ze ba me Edom. Who is that coming from Edom? Scripture proceeds to personify God as emerging from the Edomite land after having defeated that nation in battle, an event that is to occur at the end of days. He has trampled upon Edom so violently that his majestic garments become splattered with red blood, making it appear as if he was working in a wine press where the workers' garments are reddened by wine. The metaphor continues with Hashem stating, For this day of vengeance has been in my heart, my year of redemption has arrived. Is this the ultimate consolation, that vengeance will be violently wreaked upon the Edomites, representing all the anti-Semites throughout our history? Are we such a bloodthirsty people, eager for violent vengeance against our enemies? For some, who suffered under the hands of great oppressors, that imagery is indeed a consolation. But what about those of us who find all this blood and gore to be not only unconsoling, but completely out of character for the chosen people. Why personify God as a bloody warrior at all? The Gemara seems to be concerned about the overly anthropomorphic quality of this passage, and so it lets us know that in the future, Hashem will not actually be slaughtering the Edomite people. He will rather slaughter the angel of Edom, who is known as Samael, which is one of the names of the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination. According to tradition, this is the angel that Yaakov wrestled with in Parshat Vayishlach. The angel represents the evil that is implanted within man, inciting him to sin. At the end of days, God will eliminate the Yetzir Hara from within man, so that we can serve Hashem unencumbered by our evil desires. This may be a much more appealing way of reading the biblical passage, which is why I've used this interpretation in the past. But in light of what has been going on in the world right now, allow me to offer an interpretation which is a bit closer to the original text. After describing God's stained garments, the prophet quotes him as saying, the abit ve'in ozer, I look around, but there's no one to help. I am in silent shock, for no one is offering support. Instead, my own strong arm brings salvation, my own wrath delivers support. Hashem is coming to the defense of the Jewish people and is hoping that other nations too will come to their support. Instead, all he hears are cries of condemnation from the UN and the International Court of Justice and at best, silence from Israel's allies. God who fights Israel's wars represents the voice of the Jewish people themselves. God fights alone, as it were, via Israel's military, and he laments the fact that his garments have become so sullied. It is truly an embarrassment for the king's royal clothing to be so stained in blood, just as it is debasing for the Jewish people to be shedders of blood. Nonetheless, it is sometimes something that we are forced to do. Because we stand alone, we must fight the wars strengthened by God as loners, when you're the only warrior on the battlefield, your hands and clothes become dirtied by the blood of your enemies. It is not something to be proud of, but is rather a lamentable yet necessary evil of war. We wish to be God's representatives in this world, a princely people wearing royal garments that are unstained by this kind of blood, and we look forward to the day when all violence will be over and our message of peace and reconciliation with all of mankind can once again be sounded. Earlier in the Haftorah, in chapter 62, Isaiah states that this day will soon arrive. He says that once the final salvation occurs, vira'u goyim tzidkeich, the nations will see your correctness and the kings will see your glory. You will acquire a new name which God himself will pronounce. Today we may be a pariah in the eyes of the world. 
No matter what we do, even with the most precise and targeted forms of eliminating terrorists, the world still manages to accuse us of the crimes of our enemies. The Gemara we quoted above says something truly bizarre. Edom's angel, Samael, realizing that Hashem is coming after him to kill him, will try to save himself. Samael will try to run to a city of refuge, an Ir Miklat. But in his haste, he will blunder into thinking that he can be protected by a city of refuge, when in reality this is only to protect the accidental killer, not someone who murders in cold blood like Samael. This Gemara acts as the basis for a very popular hymn among Hasidim who sing Bevo'o Me Edom at Shaloshudis. It represents a truly emotional and spiritual climax as Shabbat is leaving. Many Hasidim have the minhag in the middle of this recitation to accept the yoke of heaven upon themselves by standing up and shouting Shema Yisrael. So this is clearly something theologically important, but what does it mean? I think that for our days, in the midst of this existential war, we can look at Israel's enemies as the angel Samael, who deludes himself by saying, I had no choice. I didn't really want to kill the Jews, but they forced me to rape, murder, and pillage because they're the occupiers, the oppressors, and the interlopers. They are the proverbial child who murders his parents and then throws himself at the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. The useful idiots of the West buy these arguments and offer their homes as cities of refuge for the terrorists. Yet there will come a time, once all the violence is over, when the world will realize that there is a difference between a terrorist and the victim who defends himself, and that city of refuge will be sealed off once again from Samoel. Perhaps when the Hasidim stand up and yell Shema Yisrael after reading this story, it's because when you are amidst darkness, you need to reaffirm your faith. When the world around you is accusing you of being the bad guy, when they accuse the victim of being the oppressor, we need to shout, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, like you, we're getting the bad rap. They look at your bloody clothes and see you as the oppressor, when in reality, you are single-handedly destroying evil. Ribono shel olam, we are your kindred spirits. Let's also remember that the enemy exists within each of us. This archangel, Samael, this Yetzer Hara, which occludes our vision and removes our clarity. Sometimes we get sloppy about judgments and we can end up with disastrous results. The Yetzer Hara does that to us. Indeed, the name Samael, according to the rabbis, is a derivative of the word misame, which means to blind. We allow ourselves to become blinded to truth and we should learn not to make the same mistakes as the Edomites of the world. We too sometimes think we're entitled to an ir miklat, to seek the refuge of arguments like, it's not my fault or I didn't know, when in reality we should just accept the blame for our poor decisions. Some commentaries suggest that we read this Haftorah on the last Shabbat of the year because of the words that we quoted above, Ushnat Gu'uli Ba'a, my year of redemption has arrived. May this be a fitting prophecy for the year 5785, dear friends. When we see an end to all war and the final redemption will have arrived, may we see it bim rabbi amenu amen. Here's wishing you a beautiful Shabbos, ketiva v'chatima tova, blessings for the new year.